Welcome to DEF CON 3, I'm KT McFarland. ISIS has just released the second video showing a beheading of an American journalist. Is there anything that we could potentially learn of, of significance, any intelligence information about ISIS, um, as a result of the execution of this most recent journalist, Steve Sotloff? Fred Burton is joining us now. He's one of the original founders of the U.S. government's interagency hostage debriefing team, which is responsible for designing a comprehensive process to examine hostage videos and pictures. So Fred joins us now to discuss whether the large amount of forensic evidence um, can be uncovered from these two videos that we've seen so far. Thank you so much, Fred. What do you make? You've seen the two videos. Is there anything we can learn about ISIS? Well, there's a tremendous amount of forensic evidence that uh, the killers have left behind. And there is no doubt in my mind by now that the U.S. intelligence community knows exactly who did this. As you examine these two videos, they appear to have been shot uh, in a similar location. You have the killer who is left-handed. He's wearing a leather shoulder holster. He has the double-edged combat knife that uh, uh, looks brand new. And the interesting part would be the psycholinguistic analysis of his statements in comparison. So uh, the question going behind the scenes would be that the analysts are going to be asking, is the killer the actual author of the text, or is someone else crafting these messages that are being stated not only by the victims, but also by the terrorist killer? Well, Fred, one of the things that was, I think, the most upsetting about these videos, other than the brutality of it, is who was doing the beheading is, and who was doing the speaking. Someone with a British accent sounded like a Londoner, um, letting us think that the threat is not just something in the Middle East, but something that potentially threatens Europe. And then last week we saw the British Prime Minister taking really significant and serious steps to protect his own homeland. What do you make of that? I think the Brits have a problem. Uh, remember, it wasn't too long ago when a jihadist uh, beheaded uh, an off-duty soldier on the streets of London and that's one of the fears as you look at this kind of phenomena is British passport holders traveling back to the mainland and carrying out similar acts of terrorism and it's also a concern here domestically having said that I think the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Forces have a pretty good handle on who has traveled overseas and hopefully we have all those individuals watch listed so we can pick them up upon re-entry back to the United States. All right, so we, we're looking at, we assume, or at least reports that I've seen say several hundred American passport holders could have been fighting in, um, in Syria and Iraq and potentially coming back to the United States. It's lost to nobody that we're coming up to the anniversary of September 11th. We've just seen reports that there are 11 commercial airliners that are missing from the Tripoli airport as radical Islamists, probably al-Qaeda related, have have presumably taken them. We know about this returning um, passport holders to Europe, to the United States. How nervous should we be about September 11th? I think we're, we are in much better shape domestically to prevent uh, another 9-11 style attack in the continental United States. That doesn't mean that these missing airliners from Libya could not potentially pose a problem either on the Horn of Africa or in the Middle East. For example, if you had a qualified pilot, could you take one of those kinds of aircraft and nosedive them, let's say, into an oil field in Saudi Arabia? Those are the kinds of threats that uh, are game boarded every day by the CIA's counterterrorism center and the intelligence community as we look at uh, this potential for these aircraft to be utilized. Well, it all sounds pretty horrifying. Thank you so much for joining us. Fred Burton, Vice President of Intelligence of Stratfor, and for these purposes, a former State Department counterterrorism agent. Thanks so much for joining us. DEFCON 3.